So the way 42 works out usually is that everyone that's working on a side project comes up and pitches their project every week. They're pitching the same project every week. The idea is that this renews their commitment to working on their project so that they don't die in my graveyard like every other project. Uh, the, as well as creating social incentive so that they continue to be pressured to work. Which I just said the same thing twice, which is awesome. Uh, as well as giving each other updates on how the project is going. So usually I start, and this is no different, I'm going to start. So my side project is 42 Moonlight, this. In other words, what I'm working on is building this community and providing more resources for all of us as a community. So that means cool things like Sarab coming and talking to us, other things like hackathon events, etc. It also means things like we have a repository, a GitHub repository of documentation that everyone that is a part of the club has access to can look through. Some of the stuff we have on there is how to uh, use Brew on the computers, how to set that up. Uh, we strongly encourage anyone that figures out anything about these computers to put that shit in the docs. Because, well, I just don't want you to ask me about it. I want you to look at the docs, because you can figure it out on your own if you actually have the steps in front of you. You're not stupid. Neither am I. So, that is some of the resources we have available. Uh, once we start having enough projects that are ready to be published, we will be putting them on domains. Uh, I own ibuiltathing.com, which is an awesome domain. So ideally, I'd be giving every side project once it's, uh, depending on it, if it's a more commercial venture or uh, a user-based venture or anything where they're going to be racking up like an expensive bill, then they won't go there. But if it's simply a sort of relatively simple uh, project, then I'll be getting them a subdomain from the ibuiltathing.com. So it would be like um, project dot ibuiltathing.com to host and show their friends, as well as keep a small portfolio for themselves in the process. Uh, any questions? So if something is on your website, they want that, there's no string attached, right? That nothing, if, like, if it becomes something, they... No, that's yours, I don't care. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yours, absolutely not. Uh, if you really want, you can figure out some paperwork, but like, <laughs> so I don't care. That's not the 42 way. I, it's, it's definitely not the 42 way. Uh, the, the, the main guy here doesn't believe in contracts. Uh, which, it's cool, I have any religious. Uh, so, uh, but also like, yeah, it's yours, I don't care. Uh, I get more out of it having been on my website for like a quick hot, if it becomes anything, I get more out of it being on my website for a quick hot minute than so it's done as you have. They might get into that process. Any other questions? Cool. All right. So who wants to pitch first? Me and your last, because you're going to So the project that I had an idea for this week uh, is not anything really new or novel. It's just kind of a, a portfolio piece that I'd love to put together. Uh, so I would love to somehow hack slash get access to uh, the major listing services, which is basically the place where all of the fun information that realtors collect on all the different houses uh, that they are selling, that are on the market, that sort of thing, uh, are. And there's basically this massive amount of data, uh, including all the different pricing uh, information available. Uh, and it's basically the, the realtors go to for uh, trying to figure out what houses they can sell, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'd love to be able to do some data analytics on it, uh, on particularly one of them, like here in San Francisco or New York City or someplace with a lot of data, uh, and try to have something that can, if you put in some simple information about your house, can predict how much you can sell it for. Uh, so there are a couple other tools that do this, but I think it's something that people are always really interested in because the house is such a huge investment. Uh, and if I can build something, I can train a model to do this, uh, using some, some data science tools, I think that'll be some great practice for uh, real-world applications. So yeah, uh, that's, for those that haven't been here before, an example of a pitch that's not a startup, uh, which is just as valid here. At the uh, so yeah, any questions, any thoughts about it? So, what would you, like, want to develop a Ooh, so first I'd be getting access, which costs uh, if I were to get it myself, would cost me basically becoming a realtor. 
and I'm not kidding, because they like lock that shit down. Yeah. And, and, and then access to the service itself is that you can Yeah, yeah, it's running on location. And that's like, if I wanted to be something that works everywhere, I need to get it everywhere. Because <laughs> like, you can't just do it in like one state or one area, and like each, like, there's one for like much of California, but not downtown San Francisco. So like, that's, that's kind of the first step. Uh, but I'd love to build something that, that server side is running C, uh, and then has some sort of front end, uh, and who knows how that's going to work. I'll realize that response. You should, you should use the database web server in C. I, I really want to build a web server in C. That'd be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have a friend of ours who loves C, loves C for, I mean, not for the viewer. I've been writing this for a while, but loves C. And his side gig, his, his like side project for fun, is building a web server in C. Which, if you don't know, is fucking me. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> uh, so yeah, any other questions, thoughts about it, ways you'd go about it? Uh, so, what did you actually introduce it? Uh, I was on the BART, coming back from the city on a Sunday afternoon, and I was looking out and I was like, I wonder how much this house costs. So I was like, maybe I can build something that can kind of do that. What's up? What if you could just predict housing prices so you don't need a database? I mean, yeah. If you uh, if you have any access to some, some cool data that can help. Uh, the green tag. What do you mean? The green tag. What was that to happen with that? Uh, oh, like like the the public data source. Yeah. Well, the thing is, those listings are actually like relatively low quality, and oftentimes are either it's like the public data. There's a lot of public data available on a ton of different websites uh, about all these housing things that don't require you to go through MLS. But these are almost always like out, out of date uh, and aren't and are not nearly as uh, in depth as the, the listings on the web website. So you, so like you might be able to get like the house, like the listing price, and you won't be able to get like the actual sale price of these houses, which is of course for a model that you're trying to train really relevant, or like if it has a swimming pool or like if there's a fireplace, stuff like that, which the real website actually does have, which is pretty cool. So, what's your goal for? Uh, I mean, if I can do it, that's kind of the first goal. Uh, is your goal to start a business? Is it to predict the price of the house? Is it to practice coding? Uh, first and foremost, is practice coding. Should I end up running this project and really building something out that I like, uh, I'd try to post it. Because I think that uh, I mean, there are a couple services, like Zillow back in 2006 was built around this idea, and now it's grown into a whole bunch of products. We've got all these first things. Yeah. Uh, but if I can build something, like I think that everybody wants more data about what their house could be worth, uh, like as they're trying to make decisions. So if I can build one of the tools that people go to, uh, so it can be a check off somebody's list, then it could be cool to build something that actually has some sort of uh, public appeal. Uh, but the, the, the goal isn't to like go make a bunch of money with it. I mean, if it happens, like if you want to throw me some money, I'm down. But yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess my concern for your project would be that. If your goal is to like practice coding, there's mm -hmm. like a lot of barriers to entry for this particular project. So you might yeah. spend more time battling those barriers to entry than practicing coding. I think that's very fair. Yeah, and that and thing. another thing is for anything if it's machine learning, mm -hmm. like their data sets are hard to come by. Right. Uh, we talked about this in the previous meeting, and there's there are data sets available publicly. But you're not just going to stumble upon like a treasure trove of data um, just lying around that there's nobody's paying attention to. Agreed. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the big question of whether or not I go forward with this project. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, like I have a couple friends, uh, friends of friends that have this sort of access to these sorts of data sets, uh, and if I can build something that runs well on a small sub, like on one small data set, uh, small being thousands of listings, uh, then it's possible that like I can try to spin it out and like get larger approval from some organization that already has all the access. Uh, like, like that's kind of trajectory should end up trying to really be something that is widespread. But if it's just something that like I can get access to like where I'm from, Portland, like their housing, uh, their MLS, and like just have it work for Portland, like that's something cool. Um, hi, uh, I'm Piyush, and uh, I'm, I'm actually taking a machine learning course from uh, Udacity, so I've been working on a few uh, projects related to the same thing. Uh, 
the, the project I'm working on now is uh, it's called a student intervention project where um, it's like we given a data of uh, data set of these students who are studying at a, in a particular class and where they are like what what is the job of their uh, father their mother and what are they how much time are they spending studying and that data set has like multiple uh, categories and we we are basically supposed to uh, predict um, what are the uh, it's a classification problem, so we are supposed to uh, inform beforehand the, the school about whether this person would be able, whether this student would be able to um, clear the final exam um, or not, or, or or whether you you can intervene before the final exam and make sure he clears the exam. So uh, it's it's a pretty interesting problem, and I'm I'm new to machine learning now, so. Um, the data set is pretty small, not, not thousands of students also, it's, it's like maybe around 300-400 students, but uh, yeah, that's the set any questions. And uh, co coming to the uh, housing, housing pricing, so uh, before this we actually had a project called the Boston Housing Pricing Project where we could predict the uh, pricing of the houses, again the data set was small but it's there are quite a few public data sets available which, which can help you get started with um, such and such. Um, such oh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Can I ask where you got this? It is provided by the course itself, so it's like a CSV file which can be future set. But there are multiple sites. I mean, I, if I come up, uh, I've bookmarked them, I don't remember any right now, but there, there's a site which has tons of data which you there are a lot of beta reports which will get you access to this data. Yeah, so, so this is a part of your course. Yeah. Uh, it's, you can see it in the like, this particular project, the Vision Library. So, oh. this is part of the course, right? Yeah. So, you, you do the project, what do you, you expect to take out of it? Like, maybe some specifics to it, maybe it's another side project for you. Well, yeah, basically, I'm trying to just take the learning part of it, not. Uh, not at all looking at this as something which can make you money. No. Um, totally purely from a learning perspective where I can get to know what supervised, unsupervised learning. Basically machine learning, the ba basics of it. Okay. I'm, I'm working on scikit learn now, which, which is like the most well known Python framework for machine learning. It's pretty interesting. But uh, so the, as far as I understand, it's like the previous course they had in the previous classes, the time they're spending, uh, whether they consume alcohol on weekends, uh, and uh, the, again, yeah, the, the occupation of the mother, father, uh, and they are like 15, 20 years uh, teachers. I, I can share them. It's not no, just based on the logger. It's not like so. un 
uncovering some sort of correlation. It's like this is a fact. You know, there's an algorithm that right. says you get into the school because if you log this many hours, you got this many points. Yeah. And you're a or a But but I think I, I'm not sure how you would get the data for people who should qualify for the system. I mean.
we decided to work with you on it, and we, we're going to start maybe this weekend, and we'll see how it goes. So, and add some other projects, but they don't, don't matter at all. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. Questions? Um, I want to know more about this rafting platform, like who judges, who wins, and stuff like that. Well, yeah, um, it's, it, it's going to be, the, the battles will be laggy, and so people will be watching them or, like, while, while it's happening, and they'll be able to vote for the people, for the person that they, they think is best. I I thought about adding some judges too, like uh, some real ju judges that, that would, that would be, be, be here for the, for the game. That, so, but one of my uh, partners, <laughs> he said that maybe it's it's best to let the people vote. Like, so yeah, I think it's best. Any other questions? Is there anything similar? Um, there is, but it's not live. That's why I decided to, to do this. Yeah. Um, do you have any framework uh, around which, which platform you're going to use for the live thing? Oh, yeah. I'm going to use uh, Socket.io with, with Node.js. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, I have a cool idea you can use. Uh, so I was at uh, Facebook uh, headquarters last week. And uh, they had this cool thing in which they would basically have a Facebook live video being broadcasted. And uh, it be influenced by the amount of comments it is receiving. So basically, in a live voting system where you have something being broadcast, imagine a Facebook live stream with two columns A and B. And if people write A in comment, then the, the text size of A gets bigger. So, so the voting happens through comments. So they have this very interesting thing going on where the live video live is being manipulated. So you could try that out and it would be very interesting for them. Yeah, it's interesting. Right? Yeah. So, but uh, what I what that's a that that's a very good chart. But uh, it was basically done through Evergreen Bell. So Facebook uh, live live video is basically being to be supplied with a, um, a, a, a web stream. And if you find a way to manipulate that web stream in real time with Evergreen Bell based on Facebook API comments, then So yeah, so what I thought about is, what I thought is people will, will be able to comment and vote. So yeah, the comments will when, after the battle, the comments will appear at, at the at the specific time, at the specific time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, so it's live, and you know people are going to be you know, interested in battling and stuff like that, and you have votes that come in for three minutes. So have you thought about? something up for next week and we'll demo something.
things that computer science were, were close to that. Um, one of my projects that I was gonna do, you know, it was a database of class, um, was to make a um, real, like, something, um, something real, because our teacher was like, um, you can build like a library or something like that, and I really didn't wanna waste my time on, on something for just a class. So I thought about, um, let's call it, Facebook slash Tinder for pets. <laughs> um, it will be like a website or also an app that you can um, put the information of your pet, like where you live, and parents, um, his name or her name, everything. And also, if you want to like. using um, Fungi app or using um, Bergen app to export it to like a web app, like, oh, like a mobile app. What's the purpose of like swiping? Is it just adopting No, it? it's not swiping, it's more like, well, it could be swiping. It's more like um, you have you know, your dog and, um, okay. Um, the idea was more like um, one of my best friends, um, she lost her dog like well, um, many months ago. She, she found it like um, weeks after that, but um, I was thinking of like putting a um, QR code in the, um, in the tag so people like can scan it and all right, um, my name is, um, I don't know, um, my name is um, Fluffy, I live in this street, this house, these are my parents, um, cell phones, my vaccines, or pretty much all the information that I need. <coughs> um, then I thought about like Tinder, I don't know why, and then I like, like merged them and, oh, it would be great having all this information and seeing like the information of a and like, okay, this seems good, like, she comes from a good family, and like, she has uh, her vaccine up to date. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, in Panama we have like a Facebook um, 
three months. So I thought I'd make you some tomorrow or um, maybe you can't pay me at night tomorrow or I'd pay you tomorrow night. Yep. Um, do you have any more questions? Alright, hand up. Do any way that purchases. A lot of you guys know I work on really obnoxious sound tools that take up all my time. <laughs> anyway, I was talking about Pong last time. Is that what Pong is?
all, this is the downloaded, it should actually finish when you get to the page. But basically, my idea came from realizing that there's a ton of links in our Slack and you know, Slack channel in general, and there's no like real way to organize them by categories or <coughs> really any way other than like searching them up. Um, so I figured I want to learn Node, I want to learn Express, I want to learn more JavaScript, and I want to learn how to use APIs. Might as well build something using the Slack API um, and have a bot that basically, whenever a link is posted, uh, an event gets fired, it asks you, hey, do you want to post this on your team's link board? Uh, you say yes, you add a description, a title, and it basically shoots it up to your Slack team's link board. So the more and more I think about the idea, the more and more it becomes like Reddit. Uh, where you have a voting option, upvote, downvote, um, you know, a just really simple layout, like cut and dry, straight to the point. You know, these are your links, these are your categories. Uh, vote to see which one's the best. If something gets downloaded enough, maybe I'll have like a mod system, and the mods can look at it and you know throw it off, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so that's not great. Well, uh, specifically right now where I'm at is just learning Mongo. Uh, that's a pretty big learning curve, right? Learning back in development. Um, I have a rough idea of what I want it to look like. Uh, I'm going to show you guys, hopefully it all works. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you guys all that. Uh, eventually, I want it to be a uh, integrated 42 API, so we can have our own private link board uh, that you need to authorize to 42, uh, the, their API. <coughs> uh, so if people decide to you know, mess with it and post anonymously, uh, we'll actually know who they are because they're using the 42 API and we're talking about it. Um, that's basically and then it's also another API you can work with. So uh, more learning there. So, oh, and then uh, at the end step when I send it out for people to use, I want it to be very easy to set up. Uh, where you know any Slack team can just go to the repo and say, oh, okay, this is all I need to do to set up the simple stuff. Cool, I'll set it up. And then if they want to customize it more, of course this would be open source. This is a side project for me to learn stuff. And yeah, cool. Um, so let me I'm just trying to learn. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so categories are very kind of dry, like simple how they made. Just like when you're posting this link to the site, you have the category you want to be in. Uh, and then maybe have like, some suggested categories for it. I just keep typing like type in tool instead of putting in tool. It'll auto generate the tools or something like that. Uh, and it's like a lot like Slack where you have like the channels, it's like hashtag or channel name. That's how the categories will show. Any other questions? Is it what is the normal? Uh, so currently, I haven't even begun messing with Slack API. It's actually the next, next step. I have an idea of what it needs to look like. I want to organize my database really well and learn a lot of stuff about that because with Mongo specifically, I've got a lot of advice from Oliver. It can go wrong very fast if you don't know what you're doing. And even if it's a simple project, I still want it to like I still want to do things correctly for best practices. And so once I have the database organized, then begins the Slack. And I actually don't know. Does anyone have experience with Slack API? Because so I have a question. I could talk to Kane. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Kane. I actually meant to talk to him because I, I was talking about what we could possibly do with Marvin, uh, like archiving messages and stuff like that for free Slack channels. And basically, the, the biggest thing in Slack API is uh, I want it to be easy to use, like inside Slack, so you don't have to do like, a lot of like, outside work. Uh, but I don't know how I'm going to be able to get a Slack bot to post to a website, like how exactly that will work. Um, so that's one of the big challenges a lot of people face. One of the things you could do is, is uh, can you have Slack cross post to another uh, application that's open on someone's computer? Because if you could, then you might just have to have another application that's open for the Slack bot to the data to the other application and that application post it to the internet. I mean, I was also thinking like maybe I could have it if I got like, a separate API if you're in yeah. court, right? And so it's like one like command, like post this information to the web server. So I don't have to like have a lot of talking in between. Right. I don't have a lot of experience with this, so I'm pretty much talking out of my ass here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that's the right word. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 And you feel about that that we've got the sense stuff you have And just use the API and the, like the make format. It seems that it would make sense for Slack to make sure that free channels can't post stuff to the internet easily. I mean, that's that's why you have an API. Yeah, like, yeah. So you can do that. And it makes sense. Like, if you can make it, like, if they're fine with that. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. 